Recently, the Moscow metro system opens nine stations on the big circle line, Bolshaya Kaltsevaya Linya, creating the world's longest circular metro line at 70 kilometers in length, requiring an hour and a half for a train to go all the way around. The concept for such a second ring in the metro goes back over 50 years, but only was approached in earnest in the last decade. Today, we'll explore one of the most memorable of these new stations on this newest line, the Gatinsky Saton. Nagatinsky Zaton is located in its namesake region, southeast of the city center, on the banks of the Moscow River. This word Zaton means backwater and is a reference to the small inlet of water that historically served as a place to build and repair ships. It is also important for being the location of the Moscow Canal's locks here in the city. The area surrounding the metro is a wide open common space with not much in the way of decorations or even benches. Immediately across the street from the station, there are a number of older, late Soviet-era residential buildings, a total of 15 to be exact, which judging by the size may seem like a lot of people, but is actually a tiny amount for a metro station. The only infrastructure elements on the square around the entrance pavilion are these stylized lampposts with decorative elements reminiscent of fins or flippers. To the left of the entrance is still a construction site, which is busy starting the final part of the station. When work is done here, not only will the embankment be a new miniature green area for people to relax in when coming or going, but a pedestrian bridge will span the Nagatinsky backwaters here, connecting the station with the more heavily populated area on the other side, where residential complexes are still being constructed. And while this isn't all that important, I thought it was pretty nice that this service structure, located a good distance away from the metro above ground, still has this wavy wall which really shows how unified they tried to make everything here. Let's head into the metro now. The interior of the station's sole vestibule is markedly different from most, as the ceiling is decorated with round, golden, reflective panels that call to mind the scales of a goldfish, further enhancing the station's motif for passengers. One last detail here in the vestibule that I thought was absolutely fantastic is this walkway bolted to the higher area of the wall, which makes it much simpler for workers to wipe down the windows and walls uh, something that has to be done frequently, especially in the summer when it can be quite dusty outside. I've seen too many stations that opened without such a walkway, so it's really nice to see it here. Let's enjoy one last glimpse of the scales before heading in. The walls leading to the final set of doors feature simplified versions of the fish designs so prominently featured on the platforms. In the escalator gallery, the ceiling, composed of white aluminum paneling, has a slight wave effect, though that's perhaps more noticeable when ascending. The total time from top to bottom, or vice versa, is not so bad for the Moscow Metro, approximately 45 seconds. The whole station is built for those with vision impairment in mind. A special system allows them to find their way in through the correct set of doors and all along the floor are special tiles that help those with canes to navigate easily. Nagatinsky Zaton does not have a central platform, so to get on a train going in the opposite direction, you must go up a set of stairs and through a short corridor and down another set of steps. Trains running clockwise are on the far platform, counterclockwise movement on the platform closest to the escalators. The walls of the station are white marble and gabbro, while the floors are granite tiling.
there are long wooden benches where passengers can rest while waiting for the next train, though the wait is never more than a few minutes. The core design elements pay tribute to the denizens of the Moscow River, which surrounds the narrow peninsula where the metro station is located. Spread across the two platforms are 12 different mosaics, enough to make it the favorite stop of any ichthyologist. Carp, Bullhead, Pike, Gobi, Chub, Bream, Ablet, Perch, Burbot, Roach, European pike perch, and a tadpole. The style of mosaic is a mix of Florentine and Roman styles, with large pieces applied in a freeform manner, not always in direct contact and at different angles, allowing for a more artistic result. This technique creates interesting effects, making the works captivating from up close and far away. One of the biggest points of interest to the mosaics are all the little details hidden away in the handiwork. Nagatsinsky Zaton may not be one of the most heavily trafficked stations, nor very central, but I do believe that its unique motif and stunning mosaics will continually draw visitors. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Nagatinsky Zaton metro station. If you have, please be sure to like and subscribe. As with over 250 stations in the Moscow Metro, there will be more videos like this to come. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, as well as if you have any suggestions for what parts of Moscow or Russia you'd like to see in the future. For now though, I'm Wyatt, and this has been Russia in Context. Thanks for watching.